family, it's time for a true look at your world. <laughs> Let's get hooked up for Pack Therapy. Here's your hosts, Tim Donnelly and Graham Hill. Welcome back to another edition of Pack Therapy as our long week coverage continues as we are setting you up for the Wolfpack's final four game this upcoming Saturday against Purdue in Phoenix. We're doing things a little bit differently. First things first, I'm not Tim Donnelly. I'm Graham Hill. Hopefully you're familiar with me by now if you've been listening to the Pat Therapy episode, which, by the way, be sure to like, share, subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast at. And I'm being joined by our program director, Paul Ihander, who you also should be familiar with if you've been listening to Next Up on the Fan from 9 to 10. Paul, let's just start here. Around 7.30, I'm at the Avenue, located on Glenwood Avenue, with my friends watching NC State Duke in the Elite Eight. And as Gary Hahn put it, play-by-play voice for NC State basketball, McCain throwing it up to the rim, missed the half-court shot, and it's all over. The Wolfpack are riding this incredible incredible wave, wave, which has now become a tsunami, and that tsunami is rolling into Houston. You hear that as you're watching the game, and you think what? Well, that's what he said, right? Tsunami, you know, wave and tsunami. And I'm thinking to myself as a sports fan, uh, it's it's time to get ready for a championship run. If you weren't ready for it prior to what was going on that night, you had to have been ready for it at that point. Where no one was thinking about how deep this team was going to go, it was really about when are they going to get out. And that moment really never came. And so you think about when a team makes a run like this in any team sport, you're thinking how special this is and how much you can embrace it and how much you can capture that in the fleeting time that's remaining, right? You can always talk about winning the championship for the rest of time, but getting to that championship, it's still about fleeting moments and taking advantage of those moments. Now, I also should have mentioned that after the game on Sunday, you decided to come in here and do sort of a a special fan edition of an Elite Eight post-game tailgate, which we'll get more into later on. But I just kind of want to pull the curtain back a little bit and kind of share a spotlight on you. You're probably like, oh, come on, Graham, don't do this. It's all right. You're the program director here at You can Google everything about me. It's all out there. Yeah, as I say, you're on Google. It's all out there. People would be able to find you. But you've worked in many different markets throughout the country. A tennis school in Oregon, which has a great communications department. Um, Working in Atlanta, Las Vegas, Phoenix, San Antonio, not in that order. And now you're here. Does this run compare to any other sports team, both professionally, collegiate, that you've also seen in any of the other areas that you've worked in? Well, you, you left Denver off this list, too. Okay, so, I didn't even so, know that. So, so been, learned, I learned something new again about Paul. <laughs> so I've been, in, I've been in lots of four-sport towns. I've worked in a lot of four-sport towns, worked, worked in New York as well. In terms of runs when it comes to this, getting back to the original question, not in this manner, not the way state basketball – the way this team started, the non-conference schedule, let's all be honest, wasn't this knockout, drag out, oh my goodness, they're playing all these powerhouses. There, sure. was, there was one, it was Tennessee, and that was it. And Tennessee made a deep run this year, uh, clearly. But when you see how this team rolled through the first part of the season and then went into conference play and had its struggles, right? Good nights, bad nights, good nights, ended the season the way it did on that four-game losing streak, and then putting together must-wins and getting ready to go home every night but not willing to to go home every night for nine consecutive games. Now, I've seen championship runs. You mentioned I was in San Antonio. I was there for two NBA World Championships. Those are different. Longer grinds and different kinds of teams with different expectations. You were talking about Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili. And roll back a little bit further, David Robinson in that same mold, Sean Elliott, Robert Ory. The list could go on and on and on when it comes to San Antonio. This NC State run, college basketball, is much different. A lot of factors have to come into play, and they talk about March Madness, right? The way March Madness needs to be, the way that rolls, it's a much different game. The ball bounces differently in March than any other time of the season. So, no, I don't see, I don't have any other true comparisons to a run to a championship. Before I ask this next question, I just want to preference State fans a little bit that you can't enjoy – the special moments without remembering some of maybe the pain and suffering to get here. So I ask this, with that being said, you took over as program director here at the fan around last fall, correct? It's been, uh, it's been a long, uh, almost two years now. What was your reputation or what did you first learn about NC state athletics or what were some of maybe the horror stories you've heard with the 
Kyle Bambard missed miss field goal kick at Clemson to knock them off when they were, I think, number one in the country. The 51-point loss to Carolina basketball to the 2017 National Championship team. The baseball team having to forfeit in the in, or in the College World Series. Right, 2021, yeah. What were your first impressions of NC State when you got here as far as an athletic program? Well, you erase a lot of things when you walk into new markets. You learn about every team when you roll in there. The f- good news for for fans out there listening, I love college basketball and I love college football, which is what this school is built on, right? College basketball, long time. We can all talk about Jim Valvano's legacy and kind of how he got pushed out just a couple years later of that. And then we all know the stories about his fight uh, with cancer and his friendship, the friendships that have lasted generations and ACC basketball in general. No real question marks when it came to that, but it always came to like, and even with college football, again, the legacy that Dave Dorn has put together, but then you saw star players leave for quote-unquote greener pastures. Devin Leary being the most uh, relative example or close example to what's going on with that. But then you look at basketball and you go, where does this go? And the fan base, where does this go? And it's always about we're there, but we're expecting something awful to happen. Or we're expecting all these great things up until whatever milestone that fans thought it was. you know, And you can hear it at games, and you hear it in the crowds, too. It is tough to be a Wolfpack fan. Yeah. And, and, Wolfpack ain't for and, soft people, it's like Philip Rivers me. said. Yeah, it's not for soft people. And so you, you get into that, and that's just part of the culture. I don't fault anybody for the culture that is created around their universities. I've been around a lot of really great schools. The traditions that come with the ACC, and certainly with the Wolfpack and the other triangle teams, are second to none. But when it comes to national recognition, Outside of those special, specific moments, Jimmy V looking for hugs, and you mentioned the the field goal misses and the drop passes and the fumbles and the expectations that come along with those things. NC State isn't thought of in that vein up until now, which is why this is such a special time where this team, the men's team, and certainly the women's team at the same time, are running white hot. But it is about moments right now. It's about moments to get to the championship because they haven't gotten the championship. Paul Ihander, program director right here at 999 The Fan, host of Next Up, which you can listen to every morning from 9 to 10 on The Fan as well. Join us for this special, I guess you would just call it a fan's perspective uh, edition of Pat Therapy because the later, the second part of this podcast is going to be all about the fans. As a program director, and I promise I'm not asking you a performance review question, <laughs> okay. how do you game plan for a moment like this when it's one of our local schools in the area that we cover? And granted, Carolina and Duke are familiar with this. So I'm kind of asking this as a part of why this is so special for NC State, which hasn't been on basketball's biggest stage since 1983. As they return to the Final Four, what do you feel your responsibilities are in covering basketball throughout this week to help walk fans up to the big game this weekend in Phoenix? Well, enjoy the ride, right? I think we all want to celebrate it. Whether you're a diehard Wolfpack fan, graduated, the degree is on the wall, you have frame mementos of just scoreboards. Like, you know you're dialed in. To those fans who are out there that are just... As, uh, as the team has said, hey, if you're off the bandwagon, you know, hey, tough, but you're welcome back to come on the bandwagon, which is why I call it the trail ride now, right? We're trying to grab all the strays and all the extra fans that want to talk about college basketball. And I think everybody loves a good story. And for NC State, there's a really good story that's in place. You have a special run by the team in terms of wins and losses. You have a larger-than-life character in DJ Burns. You have a guy coming home. Uh, to play in front of his home crowds with the other DJ. There are so many other special stories that come along with it. So not only do you have team, do you have players, you also have this historical footnote that comes along with it, where the stories that were being told about a team four decades ago are the same stories that are coming back now and allowing this current generation of Pac fans to enjoy the ride just as much. Well, you certainly got off to the right foot when you decided on Sunday evening you were going to come into the studio, turn on the mics, and provide your very own post-game coverage following NC State's 76-64 to victory over Duke in the Elite Eight to advance the Wolfpack to the Final Four. In case you missed any of that because you were out partying on Hillsborough Street or you were simply embracing the moment, this is now a broadcast of the Elite Eight post-game tailgate from 99.9 The Fan. The can throwing it up to the rim. Missed the shot. Missed the half-court shot. And it's all over. It's all over here in Dallas. The Wolfpack is riding an incredible wave. And the wave has turned into a tsunami. And that tsunami is headed to Phoenix, Arizona for the Final Four. 
Final score, 76-64. The Wolfpack beats Duke. You can light up the bell tower red. The pack is back in the national semifinals for the first time since 1983. NC State beats Duke for the second time in the month of March, this time for a trip to the Final Four. Incredible. Oh, Gary Hahn with that call, the ride that never ends aboard that bandwagon, and that bandwagon is no longer a bandwagon. It is a fully gosh darn trail ride, and it's rolling on to Phoenix. Good evening, everybody. Paul Leihander with you here. It is a post-game Final Four celebration tailgate here on 99.9 The Fan. Again, my name is Paul Ihander. We're hanging out with you here tonight as we know that they have certainly lit the bell tower red once again. And there are hundreds, if maybe not thousands, on Hillsborough Street who have been partying well into the night and will be continuing to do so. There are two numbers that I want you to remember. 76... And 83. 76 is the amount of points it took for the NC State Wolfpack to snap things out and snap out of that first half funk to take out the Duke Blue Devils 76 64, in which they scored 55 points in that second half and thoroughly dominated the Duke Blue Devils. That 76 is a number that you'll need to remember, State fans, because it is a good day to be a State fan. For those of you who are listening and paying attention, 76 is also the number that the women's team won today, knocking off Texas 76-66 to in Region 4 in Portland. And the NC State Wolfpack women's basketball team is also headed to the Final Four. They are headed on their trail ride to Cleveland, Ohio. The men are on their trail ride to Phoenix, Arizona. So it's pick and choose for state fans this upcoming weekend with men's and women's appearances in the Final Four. The first time for the women since 1998. The first time for the men since 1983. That is the other number to remember for all of you. Again, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. It's been a long day of college basketball, a certainly a long run for a lot of basketball fans and teams. The run down Ulcer Gulch, as you could say, certainly with the men's game that you just listened to here on 99.9 The Fan. It was not the greatest first half for State. It honestly was a little not the greatest first half for the Duke Blue Devils either, in which it was only 27-21. to Both teams struggled from the field. It was truly a defensive battle where everyone was just trying to figure each other out more than, more than anything else. And that second half, though, you started seeing what DJ Burns is certainly capable of. And Jared McCain did his best for Duke as well to try to keep them going but the majority of his damage came at the free throw line and unfortunately came too late for Duke and when Kyle Filipowski fouled out of that one you kind of saw that tide turn pretty quickly when DJ Burns was angry in the first half and smiling late in that second half when they were up 12 going into that final break you knew something special was about to happen DJ Burns a season high 29 points Big players, no pun intended, come up in big games. And for D.J. Burns, it was his biggest game taking this team into a Final Four that hasn't been seen around these parts in 41 years. Yes, there is one complete generation who does not know what Final Four basketball looks like for Wolfpack fans, but now you know, both, again, on the men's and the women's side. And Vegas has already set the lines for NC State and Purdue, and wouldn't you know it, once again, the Wolfpack, again, find themselves in the underdog role. Right now, you're looking at plus nine and a half. Yes, Purdue is favored by nine and a half points. And for those of you who were greeted by the advent of sports betting just as the ACC tournament got kicked off, and many of you using those quote-unquote bonus bets, and also many of you just using crossed fingers and faith, it has certainly paid off for you. And congratulations to those of you who just kept believing. It is nine Straight wins for the NC State Wolfpack. Nine. That is an amazing run. There is only one other basketball team right now that is on that similar run. And perhaps the two teams could be destined to meet each other in the Final Four. And that would be UConn. The Final Four is set on the men's side. It is NC State and Purdue. That is the team that NC State will face in the first game. And the second game, this is all upcoming Saturday night. you got a whole week to think about it. It'll be Alabama and UConn, and UConn is an 11.5-point favorite against Alabama. But the odds still keep getting shorter for NC State to make the deepest run. 
Everyone's betting on Connecticut versus the field. It is not Connecticut versus the field. It perhaps is NC State versus the world. As many of uh, you saw on Hillsborough Street, where there were plenty of students and certainly plenty of alumni down there sharing and counting down those final moments. And for those of you who happen to be at home and are tuning in right now, figuring out, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with the next week? Well, first of all, stand up and applaud yourselves. Stand up for holding on and believing in the faith. Stand up for yourselves and believe that anything is possible. And it all started in that deep, deep run on the first day of the ACC tournament when everyone said, why not us? And why not us indeed for the NC State Wolfpack, who had one of the most unbelievable runs in a tournament, taking out Texas Tech on a Thursday by 13 points, having to take a sharpshooting Oakland team in overtime, 79-73, to roll through Marquette, a much heavily favored Marquette, and a two-seed 67-58 on Friday night. And then, (laughs) DJ Burns, shooting 68% from the field, willing this team with 29 points, carrying this team on his back. His back has to hurt probably more than his feet. 76-64 over Duke. One more time. You listen to him every afternoon here on 99.9 The Fan, providing us with a little bit more perspective on what this truly means for NC State because he's seen the lean times and he's seen the good times. And certainly, it's been a lot more lean than good for many Wolfpack fans. At least that's what you would have yourselves believe. And perhaps that is true. Adam Gold joins us here. 99.9 The Fan. Adam, your thoughts as this NC State team makes this improbable run and now finds itself in the Final Four in Phoenix. I mean, there's so many things to, th- to think about. Um, I mean, if if we go back two weeks, three weeks, it's definitely improbable, right? I mean, there's no way you could have forecast this. But I could go back further and wonder why wasn't this team playing better than it was. And then once they started getting a taste of winning and getting a taste of what it took to do it, now, am I surprised they're in the Final Four? Yes. But were they always good enough to be an NCAA tournament team and then just let whatever happens when you get to the tournament happen? Yeah, I believe that to be true, too. Uh, DJ Burns is by miles playing his best basketball. He's playing better now the last two weeks than he did at any point last year. DJ Horn, for all of DJ Burns, and Burns was dominant in the second half. I mean, there's every every time NC State needed a big bucket, it seemed like DJ Horn made a play. I also think that there's an element of this that Duke is responsible for just for today in that Duke looked like they were kind of panicked and NC State has just embraced the role and they looked comfortable in the second half. Even down, what, six points at the break? They came out and they just looked comfortable. And, I mean, that is a credit to everything that they have done. It is an unbelievable run, 41 years since the last Final Four trip. And, heck, it had been, what, 40, what, 37 years since the last Elite Eight trip when they lost to Kansas. They they went back-to-back years to the Elite Eight. Uh, But, look, it's a fun team. I think the Final Four was made for DJ Burns, too. My gosh, what a stage for him. I cannot wait for he versus Zach Eady. Mike, I don't even know what to do. It's (laughs) It's like basketball from 1982. It's just two big men, really big men going at it. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, collide, collide, back down low post, see who can spin faster, jump hooks and all that, and Purdue did its business today, knocking off a hot-shooting Tennessee team, 72-66. That is the first matchup. They have set the schedule, Adam, the final four. The first matchup (laughs) on Saturday will be State and Purdue. That's a uh, just after 6 o'clock tip here in the East Coast, and then UConn, Alabama will be the nightcap uh, on that one. as you've talked to Wolfpack fans over the past couple of weeks and, and you've seen the, the, just the craziness and the momentum and the belief, I suppose, that comes with you know, winning and, and the why not us mantra, what right. do you, how, how do you think Wolfpack fans are sitting right now as they've seen this team progress night after night after night and all of a sudden they find themselves going, should we go to Phoenix? 
The the answer to that question, of course, is yes. (laughs) You should go to Phoenix, uh, certainly if you can. Um, I don't think they're sitting. I think they're mostly hovering at this point. Uh, There's no way they're still making contact with the ground. Not to mention the fact that the women are going to the Final Four in Cleveland. Wait a second. We can't measure the courts correctly in Portland. And, like, no offense to Cleveland. Really? The Final Four is in Cleveland? Come on. Indianapolis wasn't available? Anyway. um, Look, this is is the, the... For all of the people who talk about NC State stuff, something that I have never, ever, 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 ever bought into because I just don't believe in the illogical... Um, so I, I don't, I don't even know what to tell them. I mean, em, embrace it, enjoy it. I, I mean, if it ends on Saturday night, it ends on Saturday night. I mean, you'll, you'll never, th- this is, this is a team that is going to go down in the annals of NC state history as one of the great enjoyable teams to watch. If forget, forget about all the frustration for you know, two or three months of ACC basketball this year after a five and one start to finish. I think they were nine and 11. Forget about all that. I mean, they have just paid it back in, I mean, multiples. How you just can't, not everybody gets a chance to experience this kind of fun. Uh, And I, you could talk about house money or things like that. uh, But I, th- I think it's a good basketball team that that is obviously has gotten hot, and you see what you can do with a little confidence. It just makes you so much better. I mean, I do they have pros on this team? I don't know. I don't. I mean, probably not. Doesn't matter. It doesn't when you get confident, you're just you're just better than you really are when you are a confident team. That was the thing that happened with Carolina two years ago. You know, they weren't a great team, but they got confident got a little edge to them and the, a whole bunch of guys started playing well at the same time at the right time. And they rode that, that win at Cameron all the way into a final four and nearly beat Kansas and won a national championship. Like I think state can defend Purdue on the perimeter and is like Zach E is going to get his, but uh, if you can defend the perimeter and maybe turn Purdue over a little bit, I give, I give the wolf back a puncher's chance to play on Monday night too. But uh, the question about the fans, man, this has got to be one of the great experiences of their lives. Absolutely enjoyable. Adam Gold every afternoon. Adam Gold Show 12 to 3. What flavor ice cream are you going to have tonight, Adam? <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. We have we, we have like moose tracks there you go. in here uh, that my son made us get in the store. So I think... It would be moose tracks if there's any left, uh, but I'm not entirely sure that there is any left. That's all right. Uh, but I'll, l- let me let me just close on this: as um, not being a uh, a man of deep faith, right? This is a day for belief, is it not? So I think there's some symmetry there. Maybe uh, maybe NC State fans believe in. Uh, what's going on right now. It's been amazing. Adam Gold, every afternoon, 12 to 3. Adam, appreciate the insight, friend. We'll uh, see you tomorrow. Yes, I wonder what I'm going to talk about. (laughs) I'll figure it out. All right. (laughs) Adam Gold here on 99.9 The Fan as we uh, roll into the night here celebrating NC State victories both on the men's and the women's side and trips to the Final Four. Coming up, we're going to hear from head coach Kevin Keats after the break here on 99.9 The Fan. NC State men making their first trip to the Final Four since 83. Women's first trip to the Final Four since 1998. As I said to kick things off tonight, uh, the bandwagon is no longer a bandwagon. It is a fully-fledged trail ride for sure. As promised, head coach Kevin Keats following tonight's win. Let's hear from him. You know, I've had some really good teams. And, you know, for us, I would say something about all of my teams are really special. These guys are so special. I, I think, what is it, nine now? nine elimination games or you go home um they're tremendous like you ought to you ought to see us every day uh they make it easy for me to wake up every morning and and come to practice and work hard with them because of who they are as personalities i would say this i've learned more 
basketball from these guys. And I learned in my entire career uh, because they know how to work. They're great people. They work hard. And so, and, you know, it's hard to say if it's my best, you know, you'd have to ask somebody else, but I, I'm sure having a lot of fun with this group. Kevin Keats saying he loved the way they put their heart on the line for the school. And they have definitely put everything on the line. As I mentioned, nine wins in a row. 76-64 was the win NC State over Duke. Good evening, everybody. Paul Eihander here on 99.9 The Fan. You listen to me every morning. Next up, 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, live and local every morning here on The Fan. We'll be talking about this tomorrow morning for sure as well. But we are certainly talking about it tonight. I want you to circle something and put something in the back of your head. How much basketball NC State has played this season. NC State has now played 40 basketball games. They are 26 and 14. When they began this amazing run, they were 17 and 14. That is nine games in a row. They'll be playing game number 41 Saturday night at 6 o'clock in Phoenix, Arizona against the top-ranked Purdue Boilermakers, led by All-American Player of the Year, Zach Eady, all seven foot four inches of him. As you heard from Adam Gold uh, just a few moments ago, Adam uh, says it's going to be a big battle of big bruising bulls inside with DJ Burns, the uh, player of the uh, South Region Tournament and uh, all-tournament team player against Zach Eady in that one. And it will certainly be a fight in the low post for sure. The women's side, also a big slugfest coming up Friday night. This will be in Cleveland, Ohio. The women taking on South Carolina. Yes, Zach Eady, I mean, not Zach Eady, Don Staley against the world there when it comes to South Carolina. And just to let you know, just a note, uh, in case you plan up staying up late tonight, the uh, state athletics has let everyone know that the women's team will be touching down at 2 o'clock at Reynolds Coliseum uh, tomorrow morning. So Monday morning at 2 a.m. If you want to meet the women's team as they come back with their hardware, so much trophy, so much hardware uh, coming back uh, to uh, to Raleigh and State. They'll be there 2 a.m. Reynolds Coliseum again. They won earlier tonight, knocking off Texas with 76 points as well. 76 to 66 over Texas where Isaiah James uh, went absolutely ballistic. And if you've Listen to me in the mornings during Next Up, during the show that I command there from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock. I love Isaiah James' game. And everybody learned about it today on the national level. The ESPN crews that were uh, that were pushing the uh, women's game against Texas were like, where did she come from? And I think for those of you who are Pac fans of women's basketball, I do love me some women's hoops as well. I'm a college basketball junkie, Isaiah James has game. She is legit. She is a surgeon, a chef, a Michelin star chef when it comes to Westmore's team. And Westmore again and the Wolfpack running it back. They will again moving on to Cleveland. And it'll be South Carolina and NC State in one of the games. The women's Elite Eight complete tomorrow night. So they have yet to decide on the other side of that bracket. Tomorrow night is Quote, unquote, the college basketball world's kind of marquee matchup with Iowa and LSU and then USC and UConn. So lots of stars being played tomorrow night, but NC State women not worried about punching their ticket as they will take on South Carolina in that first uh, first four or first of the final four games against South Carolina. All right, let's uh, once again go back. There's uh, more Kevin Keats to share with you. He talks about what this team has done in the last three weeks. I haven't. I mean, it's I'm sitting here and I'm I'm blessed to be here. And 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 I'll tell you what we did. We we broken the postseason up into different segments. So when we left to go to D.C., we said we wanted to win D.C. We won D.C. Then we we went to Pitt. We said we want to win Pitt. And now, obviously, in Texas, we won Texas. And it is, um, you know, it gets to a point. You know, when you're winning games and like the way we are, where you expect to win. And I think our guys now are expecting to win. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's beautiful to watch. Like, I, you know, our defense has been tremendous down the stretch. It's been so great. You know, and at the beginning of the, at the halftime, we talked about it. It was 26 to, I mean, 27 to 21. The difference in the game, neither team was scoring. They had taken um, nine, three, I mean, nine free throws. We had taken three. We made two. They made nine. 
And we, I talked about, hey, if you can come out and duplicate your defense in the second half, we will find a way to score. And we were great in the second half too. So, I mean, it's a miracle run, uh, but we're not surprised. Like we don't, we don't go in, we didn't come into this tournament and said, hey, let's just try to be here. We came here to win it and we did. So we, now we got to move on to our next stage. And that next stage is the Purdue Boilermakers, where the line is Purdue favored by nine and a half right now. Nine and a half. NC State, Purdue, that is game one on Saturday night, the following Saturday. Got all week to think about it, Pac fans. And then Alabama and UConn. And UConn is a double digit favorite right now in the early lines over Alabama. That is all coming down. And Coach Keats talking about defense, holding Duke to 32% shooting in this one. And five of 20 from three-point range. And again, getting guys in foul trouble. Obviously, Kyle Filipowski fouling out. Mark Mitchell fouling out. Jerry McCain did his best. He he tried. He tried to will this team back into it, but it just felt like a lot of those buckets it came a little bit too late, a little bit too little. DJ Burns, 29 points, dominating in the post. His career high, his season high this year. And then DJ Horn, 20 points, uh, shooting fairly well from the field but getting the buckets when they mattered the most. And again, you can only say so much about Modiara. Modiara grabbing plenty of rebounds, eating up some time, but a guy, again, practicing faith, able to turn in the performances that he did during this tournament. They didn't need so much from him tonight as they had in the past because Michael O'Connell managed to get 11 rebounds in this one. But it was a team effort, no doubt about it. That first half, everybody, we can all admit, that was rough sledding, right? That was a rough, rough first half. Coach Keats talking about how they managed to be resilient. They are partying all across Raleigh right now. Certainly they were doing so on Hillsborough Street, and certainly hundreds, if not thousands, have gathered at the Bell Tower. We'll see if we can check in with Graham Hill over the noise of the crowd. Coming up here on 99.9 The Fan. Westmore's team heading to Cleveland to take on South Carolina. Isaiah James had 27 points. That was the first half of the doubleheader for state fans, and they get both dubs. 76 is the number both teams needed to get their wins. 76-66, the NC State women over Texas to win the Regional 4 Portland is what they call it, and that earns them the right again to play Don Staley's number one rated South Carolina team. That'll be on Friday night in Cleveland. On Saturday, the Wolfpack men will roll forward after a 76-64 win over Duke, and it has been quite the ride, certainly for everybody today on this Easter Sunday, where it started out with church services and prayers and egg hunts and has turned into pretty much just a sea of red everywhere. Graham Hill is somewhere in Raleigh on the phone, seems to be surrounded by a lot of people. Graham, tell me exactly where you are and what you're seeing. Well, Paul, I am in front of the bell tower off of Hillsborough Street. There is still about, I'd say, well close to a 1,000 fans, students, grandparents, toddlers, all over the place. It is a night. It is a time to be in live in Raleigh right now. I mean, everywhere you look, it is NC State fans that are standing everywhere with their shirts off, waving towels, waving flags. I mean, does it feel like 83 yet? I know we keep asking it over and over again on our show next up, which, by the way, I might be a little tired tomorrow morning. The plan is to stay out until NC State's basketball team comes back to Raleigh, which I believe will be around 2 a.m. tonight. And if that's the case, I will definitely be live out there. I'm on the radio right now. As I have people approaching me right now that are, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's just one of those times where if you know somebody, come up and hug them, tell them you love them. It is just a it's a time to be alive right now if you're an NC State fan. Uh, Graham Hill live in Raleigh. He's uh, been going live on the uh, fan Instagram page with uh, fans down there. Uh, clearly uh, has been uh, it clearly has been a good time. When the evening started, Graham and the the women got their win, and the men went through that first half, and all of a sudden the second half, everything seemed to pull away. You were lo- you were right there in the middle of it on Hillsborough Street. When could the crowd certainly kind of tell something special was about to happen? I would say right when Kyle Filipowski fouled out late in the second half, you kind of had that feeling that and I, I, I said coming to the game, when it comes to Duke for NC State, they had to keep Kyle Filipowski and Jared McCabe. They had to keep them, they had to keep them low. 
as far as scoring. I, I can't remember off the top of my head how, how many points Cal Filipowski had. I think it was about nine or ten points. But once Cal Filipowski fouled out without the lead, maybe six or five minutes left in the game as another Wolfpack champ breaks out. That's when NC State fans started cheering, and you could kind of feel that something special was about to happen. Also, Modiora is dunk right underneath the basket. I can't remember how much time was left in the game, but once Modiora had that dunk, once Kyle Filipowski fouled out, and then once, once Mark Mitchell fouled out, that's when State fans could started to feel it, and the party started again here on Hillsborough Street. Well, Kevin Keats got to cut down the net, wore the net. It's very jovial in Dallas as well, where we know the uh, Wolfpack are certainly having a good time. Graham Hill joining us, uh, producer of Next Up, also hosts Pack Therapy on our YouTube channel and on our podcasts as well if you need some extra Wolfpack material. Although, for a lot of people tonight, I'm not sure if you could ever be full. How much ice cream have you seen down there, or is this an ice cream crowd, Graham? I haven't seen any ice cream out with uh, with how warm it is. By the way, you cannot ask for a better night as far as weather for state fans to be out here. But as far as ice cream, I haven't seen any ice cream cones out and about on Hillsborough Street. What is what is cool, there's this young fan that's about 10 years old. I saw him out here on Friday night with a poster that said, why not us? And he had eight scoops of ice cream painted on his poster. Eight's right. We're on, we're on the ninth straight when I can't even keep up anymore. But I saw the same fan. If you go on 999 The Fan's Instagram account, which, by the way, if we're not following, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff out here on Hillsborough Street. I saw the same fan that I did on Friday night, and I got another picture. And what was so cool is he had painted on another ice cream cone on the poster. So that's as close as ice cream that I've seen out here on Hillsborough Street. But, again, it is live. It is it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of excitement. And everywhere you look, uh, Hillsborough Street's blocked off and about. Overland Road, where players retreat starts, all the way down to about the communication building um, where Brugger's Bagels is. So they have about two blocks blocked off. But credit to Raleigh Police, too. They're doing a good job of making sure ain't nothing gets too crazy. Um, there's not being any bonfires. NC State fans are really being respectful as far as how they're celebrating. And really, you don't have to burn anything. This is just a moment for State fans to just embrace each other. There's a lot of older people out here with their children, grandchildren. Um, it's actually funny. There's one NC State grad from 83. She had her carport right in front of the bell tower. And I asked her how she planned on getting out. She said, whenever the police let me out. But she says, I'm in no hurry to get anywhere. So that's just kind of the, that's just kind of the mood and the vibe right now down here at Hillsborough Street on the bell tower. Awesome. Appreciate you, Graham Hill, downtown uh, at the bell tower, hanging out with uh, with uh, the fans. Go back and enjoy that celebration, Graham. I appreciate, uh, appreciate that look at uh, what's Pre- going on. Appreciate you, Paul. I promise I will be on air with you tomorrow at 9 a.m. if I have to crawl into the studio. I, I will make it in one way or another. All right. That'll be good. That'll be great. Uh, important when when Graham talks about uh, generational fans and the, the woman who parked there from 83 and uh, the kid with uh, the ice cream cones and whatnot uh, painted on the poster. And we've seen the DJ. We've heard the DJ Burns chants in some of the videos and whatnot as everybody, you know, celebrates, you know, not just the men going to the final four, but as we mentioned, the women going to the final four as well. So much hardware uh, coming back here. And it has been certainly years, 98 for the women since the last final four trip. And for the men, obviously 1983. And we're seeing some of the videos now coming out of Dallas, and we've seen them here in Raleigh too, which we've posted uh, to our social channels, but in Dallas as well, where you know, even even in in victory, this team is still taking time to appreciate the ride that they that they've taken, and obviously it's a spirited ride too, where there's you know so much that can be said about getting this far, but there's still so much more to embrace and appreciate about moments like this. Championships are rare, let alone making runs like this. A team that has played forty basketball games and even for the women the women have played 37 basketball games and are about to play yet another game in hopes of reaching that goal that you start out with the season which is to take home a championship and again championships are incredibly rare but we've seen you know dj burns there's a video right now of him taking photos with the security staff at american airlines center because people just have embraced who he is and he's a guy that clearly gets it right he became a fan favorite last year transferring in from Winthrop and now being that same guy with complete strangers, but understanding that you only get to have this moment once. So you might as well enjoy it and embrace it. Uh, more Kevin Keats for you here talking about uh, this team facing a lot of adversity and how they just kind of keep coming at you and coming at you and coming at you. 
you know, we're it's weird because having a day in between is almost seems like it's um, something wrong because we're so into what we did in the ACC tournament, you know, winning five games in five days. But they're locked in. They understand. It's like I think a couple of people asked me that were you know around the team that hadn't been around the team is are you guys always at loose? And we are. Um, you know, these guys, I, I've learned more new rap songs than I ever thought I could imagine. But I, as I said the last time is, you know, we we mix it up now. We play a lot of gospel music, too, which um, they scream just as loud when they do that part of which I'm glad that they know those songs. But it's um, it's a loose bunch. Um, they they believe in one another. They trust in one another. We had some adversity in this game. And it was at times you thought Duke had the momentum and we could have, you know, folded a little bit, but we absolutely didn't. They did not fold 76-64 after that rock fight of a first half and both teams struggling and just trying to get their feet underneath them when it came when it came to just playing defense and figuring each other out. Both teams settled in, but one team settled in even harder. And it's NC State that's moving on to the Final Four in Phoenix where they will face the Purdue Boilermakers in the first game of the doubleheader. And the women also moving on. In a game they led wire to wire, where they pulled away early against Texas and really never looked back. Got a lot of key threes uh, from, uh, you know, Sonia Rivers, and certainly uh, River in the middle did just as as much damage as she possibly could. uh, It's a special time. There is no doubt about it. And especially when you have two teams vying for the same thing and the same goal, in the same city, just two different directions, one going way west and one going to the north. But while we're on the trail ride together, let's just enjoy that ride for sure. All right, we're going to take a quick break, come back, reset for you, and get you sent off into the evening so you can go enjoy your ice cream and the rest of your Easter here on 99.9 The Fan. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Paul Ihander with you here on 99.9 The Fan as we celebrate a pair of pack victories, sending two basketball teams to the Final Four, the men, the most recent, 76-64 over Duke. They will take on Purdue in Game 1 of the Final Four in Phoenix. That is on Saturday. The women, a 76-66 win over Texas. The regional four winners, they have hardware, and they will take on South Carolina on Friday night in the fi- women's Final Four in Cleveland. And apparently there's a, a couple of posts going around on social media right now uh, that uh, if you are in mechanical and aerospace engineering 457, Apparently, your exam that was scheduled for tomorrow is now on Wednesday. Uh, that's an email exchange from some students there. If it's factual, Dr. Bryant, you are you are you are clearly a teacher who understands his students. The women are supposed to arrive at Reynolds Coliseum two o'clock in the morning. If you uh, have no plans at two a.m., if you do have plans at two a.m., you'll be able to relive it. I'm sure through a lot of videos, and there will be a lot of tardy notes tomorrow morning, depending on uh, how much of a party happens here tonight. But you will have all week to figure out what you want to do, how you will dissect these wins today, and how you will be able to move forward to this weekend, because it will feel like a very long week, but it will be a very celebratory week for Wolfpack fans, certainly for men's and women's basketball. Imagine this. On the women's side, it started with a loss in the ACC championship to Notre Dame at home. Notre Dame sent packing in the women's tournament, and only NC State survives, and they move on. And on the men's side, it's not even just the first game, that five-game stretch in the ACC tournament where they had to win five consecutive nights. Think about the moments that came along with that, especially the last-second three-pointer from Michael O'Connell that propelled them into overtime that kept this run going and kept the belief that why not us? Why not us? And it certainly happened for the men's team as well. All right, we're going to get out of here. You guys have plenty of celebrating to do, plenty of ice cream to eat, and plenty of of your favorite beverages to indulge in. Don't forget, tomorrow, next up, I'll be back 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, 9 to 10, give you some live and local, more reaction to tonight, this uh, weekend's victories, as well as Adam Gold at 12 o'clock tomorrow from 12 to 3, and Tim Donnelly, Dennis Cox with the drive from 3 o'clock to 6.30. As we kick off April, yes, March Madness is over. The madness has ended. Now it's all about hopes and dreams and national championships, perhaps, in April for your pack 
teams. All right, everybody. want to thank Rusty Helser for hanging out here tonight. For those of you who have uh, hung out with us as well, we appreciate you partying with us. And stay safe out there, everybody. ESPN Radio coming on the way. And more Wolfpack talk throughout the week. Your coverage will be complete. The road to Phoenix will run through us here on 99.9 The Fan.